Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. In the ranching heartland of America, a mysterious plot of land has been dubbed the strangest place on Earth. If tales are to be believed, Skinwalker Ranch is an epicenter of extraterrestrial activity, surrounded for decades by disproportionate amounts of UFO sightings and paranormal phenomena. Native Americans in the area believe the ranch is plagued by evil creatures known as skinwalkers, while others claim to have seen UFOs, crop circles, and unexplained lights. The Skinwalker Ranch is a weird place. Located near Ballard, Utah, it's long been the source of tales of monsters, spaceships, and other bizarre phenomena. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. If you're new here, welcome to the show. While you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, to visit sponsors you hear about during the show, sign up for my newsletter, enter contests, connect with me on social media, hear other podcasts that I host, listen to free audiobooks I've narrated, Plus, you can visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression, dark thoughts, or addiction. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Now bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. People tend to gravitate towards those they have things in common with, like-minded communities. Apparently, it's no different for non-human creatures. Skinwalker Ranch has come to be known as a site where spottings of UFOs, monsters, and other strange creatures are common. In 1994, Terry and Gwen Sherman and their children moved themselves and their cattle into the 480-acre ranch south of Fort Duchesne, Utah. Within two years, they had sold the ranch, desperate to leave behind the paranormal torment they claimed they'd been bombarded with. The Shermans took to radio and newspaper media outlets to share their experience of the bizarre things they'd witnessed on the ranch. For a long time, we wondered what we were seeing if it was something to do with the top-secret project, Terry told the Deseret News in 1996. I don't know really what to think about it. The family described a ship the size of multiple football fields and strange blinking lights. The soil on their fields had large impressions flattened into the grass. There were voices speaking in strange languages that seemed to emanate from thin air. Terry spotted a figure over seven feet tall standing next to an object. Cows would disappear into thin air, and after chasing a bouncing ball of light, three of their dogs were never seen again either. Local retired high school teacher Joseph Hicks had been researching the area's paranormal sightings since observing a flying object with his students in 1951. The piece of land hosting the Sherman's ranch was notorious from mysterious sightings, and over the years he had chronicled hundreds of them. In his studies, Hicks found that the Native American Ute tribe, who had called the area home for thousands of years, had folklore of mysterious skinwalker creatures. The particular patch of ranch land had long been deemed cursed and forbidden. It earned the name Skinwalker Ranch. 
In 2002, Hicks told journalist George Knapp, who wrote the definitive ranch history for the Las Vegas Mercury, that the Utah Basin region was so rife with extraterrestrial occurrences that an estimated half of the population had witnessed UFO activity. A few weeks after the 1996 Deseret News article came out about the ranch's mysterious occurrences, a reclusive Las Vegas hotelier flew to meet the Shermans and struck a deal to buy the property for $200,000. Robert T. Bigelow had made his fortune in the Budget Suites of America hotel chain and was well known for the interest and money he had spent to legitimize paranormal investigation. The year before he purchased the ranch, he had poured millions of dollars of his own money into founding the National Institute of Discovery Science, or NIDS, as a scientifically strict research lab to investigate extraterrestrial activity. Moving the team to the Skinwalker Ranch, NIDS quickly built an observation post, strung the property with video cameras, and hired researchers to observe it 24 hours a day, turning it into a scientific research laboratory. It chronicled multiple bizarre events. As Bigelow described to Wired magazine in a rare interview, he came from a family of believers. His grandparents first saw a UFO in 1947 when driving across the Nevada desert. Through his childhood and later in life, he was fascinated by the paranormal, interviewing people who said they had spotted extraterrestrials and digging into government information. I have an enormous amount of data from a lot of different sources that give me some pretty strong convictions about the authenticity of the existence of anomalous phenomena such as UFOs," he told Wired. In founding NIDS, he pulled in a high-caliber staff, including Colonel John Alexander, a NATO advisor who previously headed the non-lethal weapons testing at the Los Alamos National Library. But with strained funding and a slowdown of paranormal sightings at the ranch, NIDS shut down in 2004. In its final findings, it concluded the type of objects spotted flying over Utah and elsewhere were not consistent with covert American military aircraft. Bigelow then transitioned his focus into space tourism, starting Bigelow Aerospace, a company that has struck deals with NASA. A spokesperson for Bigelow Aerospace said the company had no comment relative to Skinwalker Ranch. The project may have been dismantled, but it's said that Bigelow still owns the ranch, leaving the aliens in peace. But Bigelow and the Sherman family weren't the first ones to discover strange activities at Skinwalker Ranch. An article in the Desert News from 1978 reported that residents of the area spotted a dome-shaped UFO surrounded by a glowing green light. Here is that article. UFO Sightings Keep Uintah Basin Buzzing Copyright Deseret News 1978 by Andrea Gronham, Deseret News Correspondent Roosevelt The Uintah Basin, already famous for numerous UFO sightings in the past 10 years, has been the stage for a great deal of excitement in recent weeks. Area residents say that at various locations and at times, they have witnessed the flight of an awesome dome-shaped unidentified flying object with intense lights. Dale Wood, 13, a student at Vernal Junior High School, was the first to see the large silver object near his grandmother's home about seven miles northeast of Roosevelt, about 10.30 p.m., August 11, while walking to his grandmother's trailer home. He could hear the sound of a finely tuned purring engine, Dale said. He looked up to the horizon and was surprised to see a silver dome-shaped object. It was surrounded by a very intense green light that was jagged like the flames of a fire, he said. The object then hovered directly above him, and he was able to see the underneath section of the craft. He could see the lights there with the middle light of greatest intensity. While the craft was overhead, the engine sound was not noticeable, he said. The object remained overhead for a few minutes and, Dale said, he had the impression he was being watched. Dale said he was very scared, but at the same time he wanted to see what the UFO was going to do. It began to circle 
and Dale immediately ran to tell his brother, David, who was nearby in his aunt's house. David called his mother, who was in his grandmother's home doing some canning, shouting that Dale had seen a flying saucer. His mother, Laram Wood of Vernal, told her son Dale was just trying to scare the younger children. Suddenly, the air conditioning units and television sets quit operating. Mrs. Wood tried to switch on the air conditioning, but to no avail. She also noticed that the dogs were whining and crying, not barking, she said, but whining as though they could hear a sound beyond the human hearing range. Mrs. Wood went outside along with some of her children in time to see the craft circle over the area twice. It then took off rapidly toward the northeast. Mrs. Wood said she was very frightened, yet so fascinated she couldn't take her eyes off the object. Dale had the impression the saucer-like craft may have landed in a field near them. He could hear a herd of horses located there running rapidly. He surveyed the area the following morning but could find no evidence of a landing. After the UFO disappeared, Mrs. Wood called the Ute Indian Tribe Police Department in Fort Duchesne. Officer David Murray was dispatched to investigate the sightings. He later said he too saw the object near US-40. The following day, in a conversation with Talintha Rasmussen, a reporter for the Roosevelt Standard, Mrs. Wood learned that Mrs. Rasmussen and her 10-year-old grandson, David, had also seen a craft near their Ballard home. While driving home from Roosevelt, Mrs. Rasmussen spotted something out of the corner of her eye. She looked up through the windshield and asked David if the shining object she saw was a plane or something of that nature. David calmly replied that it was a flying saucer. At that point, Mrs. Rasmussen, fearing an accident, pulled her car to the roadside and got out to have a better look. She described the object as being dome-shaped and very shiny. It was moving at a high rate of speed, she said. It headed north to the mountains. Mrs. Rasmussen and David said they were not afraid of the UFO. She said she had seen a saucer-like object about 20 years ago in the Neola area, so she knew a little about what to expect. The Woods and Mrs. Rasmussen contacted Junior Hicks, a science teacher at Roosevelt's West Junior High School who has gained some fame in the field of UFO investigation. Since 1968, he has personally investigated more than 400 sightings in the Unitaw Basin. Through Hicks' extensive files, a book, Utah UFO Display, was compiled by Dr. Frank Salisbury of Utah State University. Hicks investigated the sightings by the Wood family, Mrs. Rasmussen, and her grandson. Also present at the investigation were reporters from a national weekly magazine, and the magazine has offered rewards for proof of the existence of extraterrestrial spacecraft. Hicks was also informed by two women from Roosevelt that they had seen an object while riding their horses near the Cedars, west of Roosevelt. The most recent sighting came last Monday, about 23 miles southeast of Roosevelt. Jimmy Justice, 18, son of Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence Justice, prominent local dairy operators, burst into the family's home to report he had seen a large, glowing object near where he was working. His parents proceeded to the area and observed an intensely lighted dome-shaped object circling the area. After a few minutes, the craft headed south over the hills. He was reported as traveling very fast. The justices had the impression the craft may have landed nearby. The following day, Eva Justice, Lawrence Justice's mother, drove to the area. However, she could find no evidence of a landing. In yet another bizarre twist, tales of creatures roaming the Utah property extend even further back, relayed mostly in the oral histories of the Ute tribe. The tribe's reservations located in the area, and members have long believed that skinwalkers have inhabited the area around the ranch since the 1800s, hence the name Skinwalker Ranch. The definition of a skinwalker varies from version to version, but typically it's depicted as an evil and powerful creature who has the ability to take the form of various animals. It's believed that to become a skinwalker, a person must commit the gruesome task of killing one of their family members. Little else is known about skinwalkers, as those who believe in their existence are fearful of discussing them. According to reports by local media, Adamantium Real Estate acquired the Skinwalker Ranch in April 2016, 
and has since encountered many issues with trespassing. We just have so many problems with trespassers and people down here and vandalism, and it's very, very scary," said the now caretaker of the property. As unfortunate as it is for the owners, it can't really come as much of a surprise. Given its history, it's no wonder that believers or the curious would want to check out Skinwalker Ranch for themselves. It's not just UFOs and extraterrestrials that supposedly visit Skinwalker Ranch, either. The Sherman family claims that a number of their cows were mutilated. One such cow had no signs of injury, not even bleeding, other than a hole bored through its eye. Other cows were found sliced up with organs or other body parts carefully removed. In each case, the Shermans found no blood. A number of other cows, as well as six cats, vanished without a trace. Ranch dogs, meanwhile, were fearful of an unknown presence. In another instance, the Shermans returned home to find four bulls packed into a trailer. When discovered, the bulls snapped out of a trance and became upset. No one could figure out how four bulls ended up in the trailer, which was locked, and small enough that getting just one in proved difficult for the ranchers, let alone four. So the legend goes, just after the Sherman family moved to the ranch, they were approached by a huge, friendly wolf. Not long thereafter, the wolf attacked a calf, prompting the rancher to strike it with a stick, to no avail. He shot the wolf with a 357 Magnum, which produced no results. The wolf was shot two more times with the Magnum, then several times with a hunting rifle, with still no result. Eventually, the wolf left of its own accord. The rancher followed its tracks, which simply came to an end, as though the wolf ceased to exist as it walked. Throughout their time there, members of the family claimed to see other large wolves and canine beasts. As told on the radio show Coast to Coast AM, the Sherman family spotted blue orbs on the property, the same orbs that those three dogs I told you about earlier chased. But here's a bit more detail on that. The father set three dogs on the orb, which ducked away from them each time they approached, leading the animals further and further away from the ranch. Once out of sight of the ranch, the rancher heard the dogs yelp, but did not pursue them out of fear. In the morning, the rancher went to investigate and found three circles of burnt grass with goo in the middle, supposedly all that remained of the dogs. PETA is now officially anti-blue orb. Poltergeist activity was also reported by the Sherman family shortly after their run-in with the bulletproof werewolf. According to a segment on Coast to Coast AM, the paranormal radio news program, the matriarch of the Sherman clan stated she often came home with groceries, unpacked them, and later discovered all the food repacked into the shopping bags. The family also reported missing or moved objects, such as a hairbrush found in the freezer when it had last been seen on the bathroom counter. The Shermans heard voices in a language they could not understand and spotted shadows in the house. The Sherman family reported seeing a number of bizarre animals, including a beast that looked similar to a hyena on steroids. According to journalist George Knapp, Sherman saw the creature attacking one of his horses, but as he approached, it disappeared, leaving behind only claw marks on the horse's legs. This same varmint may have been seen by others. The wife of a local police officer noticed a similar creature at Skinwalker Ranch, and a visitor to the ranch spotted a brutish animal that ran a hundred yards in a matter of seconds and roared loudly. For a 2002 article for the Las Vegas Mercury, George Knapp spoke with Junior Hicks, who had cataloged a number of paranormal events in the area. Hicks explained, the Utes think the skinwalkers are powerful spirits that are here because of a curse that was put on them generations ago by the Navajos, and the center of the whole legend is this ranch. The Utes say the ranch is the path of the skinwalker. Tribe members are strictly forbidden from setting foot on the property. It's been that way for a long time. According to skinwalkerranch.org, a website documenting all the entities encountered at the ranch, the Dark One is extremely rare. This being is possibly human, a shaman trapped in an alternate timeline. 
Those who have seen The Dark One describe him as a silent Native American peering through the portal to another dimension. Some believe he opened the portal. When most people hear Skinwalker Ranch, they think of Utah. However, there is one in Connecticut as well. The Connecticut Ranch is located in Litchfield Hills and, according to ghost hunters Paul and Ben Eno, bears several similarities to the Skinwalker site in Utah. The family that lives at Skinwalker, Connecticut claims to have seen UFOs and ghosts as well. Paul called the location a genuine crossroads of the multiverse and states that all manner of human and non-human creatures seem to be sharing the same physical space but within their own parallel worlds. Few have claimed to have encountered a mysterious portal, but those who have say it exists on the ranch and it appears in the form of a bright orange or blue light that lasts for about 10 seconds at a time and hovers 500 to 1,000 feet in the air. The theory is the orange portal allows beings to pass into and out of our world from another dimension, while the blue allows vehicles to pass. If true, this could be how the bulletproof werewolves and massive hyenas entered and vanished from the ranch, if you believe in that type of thing. Some believe giant snakes lurk in the Bottle Hollow Reservoir very near Skinwalker Ranch. The indigenous Ute people believe in these snakes, and tribal police have reported several bizarre drownings in Bottle Hollow. One man claims that a woman he went swimming with after dark one night was pulled beneath the water and drowned by a snake. In the book Hunt for the Skinwalker, a tribal police officer attests to personally seeing a snake. It would swim straight down from the marina and go all the way down to the bottom end, he said. You could see it on moonlit nights. I saw that, well, everybody, the other guys have seen the snake in there too. An unnamed witness claims to have seen a mysterious squid on the ranch. Very little is known about this creature. It's perhaps related to the giant sea snake sightings, though this is mere conjecture. Details of the supposed encounter are extremely scarce. The Sherman family often found crop circles laid out in triangular patterns. They also reported finding neat, perfectly proportioned spherical holes in the earth. They never figured out what or who caused these markings but noted that it would be unlikely for them to miss a human visitor sneaking up the solitary road leading to their property. Of course, UFO sightings are the most commonly reported extraordinary phenomenon at Skinwalker. The Shermans stated they saw several unexplained aircraft as well as blinking lights and heard strange voices speaking in otherworldly language. As mentioned before, numerous cattle were mutilated during their ownership of the ranch which many attribute to alien interference. According to The Daily Beast, Joshua Hicks, a teacher who claimed to have seen a UFO, believes about half the local population had spotted a UFO at some point. As mentioned previously, the National Institute for Discovery Science, or NIDS, was founded in 1995 by Vegas hotel owner Robert Bigelow. Again, it specializes in the studying of the paranormal. Bigelow bought Skinwalker Ranch after reading a 1996 article on an unexplained phenomenon in the area by journalist George Knapp. Knapp and NIDS deputy administrator Colm Kelleher eventually wrote a book together called Hunt for the Skinwalker. NIDS closed in 2004 as paranormal activity at the ranch died down. As if to punctuate the point, the phenomenon at the ranch seems to constantly evolve one of the most recent incidents occurred on a cold morning in February. The caretaker for the property was patrolling the grounds early in the morning. As he walked past a watering hole, he noticed an odd circular impression in the thin ice that had formed overnight. Something had carved a perfect circle in the ice. The circle was just under six feet in diameter and seemed oddly reminiscent of the crop formations seen in English wheat fields. The cuts extended only a quarter inch into the ice, and the ice itself was perhaps another quarter inch thick. The question arises, how could this have been done? Someone standing on the muddy bank would have left footprints. The only prints were cattle tracks. 
The ice itself was so thin that it could support almost no weight and certainly would have cracked and broken if someone stood on it. Could someone have suspended themselves above the ice patch and then somehow carved a perfect circle? How, and more importantly, why? NIDS staffers following the scientific method collected and analyzed ice shavings from the spot, took readings for magnetic fields and EM radiation, checked for tracks throughout the area, but found no clues. There is no natural explanation for such a subtle event, and it has never been reported again. NIDS employees compiled a confidential report containing information about all the assorted incidents on the ranch. Reading this report will make the hair stand up on your neck. To date, the researchers have recorded seven distinct incidents involving magnetic abnormalities. Simply put, their compasses went nuts while out on the range. The needles of the compasses either spun out of control or pointed straight down at the ground. No one has a reasonable explanation. Of all the strange incidents at the ranch, this one might take the prize. It occurred on the night of March 12, 1997. Barking dogs alerted the team to something lurking in a tree near the ranch house. Tom Gorman grabbed a hunting rifle and took off in his truck toward the tree. Two NIDS staffers followed in another vehicle. Up in the tree branches, they could make out a huge set of yellowish reptilian eyes. The head of this animal had to be three feet wide, they guessed. At the bottom of the tree was something else. Gorman described it as huge and hairy, with massively muscular front legs and a dog-like head. Gorman, who is a crack shot, fired at both figures from a distance of 40 yards. The creature on the ground seemed to vanish. The thing in the tree apparently fell to the ground because Gorman heard it as it landed heavily in the patches of snow below. All three men ran through the pasture and scrub brush, chasing what they thought was a wounded animal, but they never found the animal and saw no blood either. A professional tracker was brought in the next day to scour the area. Nothing. But there was a physical clue left behind. At the bottom of the tree, they found and photographed a weird footprint, or rather, claw print. The print left in the snow was from something large. It had three digits with what they guessed were sharp claws on the end. Later analysis and comparison of the print led them to find a chilling similarity. The print from the ranch closely resembled that of a velociraptor, an extinct dinosaur made famous in the Jurassic Park films. For the record, no one at NIDS is saying they shot a velociraptor. They just don't know what it is. If the Skinwalker Ranch and all I've told you isn't strange enough, it goes over the cliff with a professional wrestler. Wrestler, politician, and conspiracy theorist Jesse Ventura took on the Skinwalker Ranch in an episode of his show Conspiracy Theory with Jesse Ventura, a show with a terribly enigmatic title. In a nutshell, the government knows about the aliens. According to Ventura and friends who present very little evidence to back up their claims, Robert Bigelow, who owned the ranch after the Shermans, found proof of or even had direct contact with aliens. What's more, Bigelow's organization, Bigelow Aerospace, is in cahoots with the government and might even be building a space hotel. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. All stories used in Weird Darkness are purported to be true unless stated otherwise, and you can find links to the authors, stories, and sources I used in the episode description as well as on the website at WeirdDarkness.com. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me and follow me on social media through the Weird Darkness website. WeirdDarkness.com is also where you can find information on sponsors you heard during the show, listen to free audiobooks I've narrated, get the email newsletter, find other podcasts that I host. You can visit the store for creepy and cool Weird Darkness merchandise. Plus, it's where you can find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression, addiction, or thoughts of harming yourself or others. 
And if you have a true paranormal or creepy tale to tell of your own, you can click on Tell Your Story. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Weird Darkness is a registered trademark. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness.